right, welcome back, Tokers and Tokets. 14 after the hour, and time for us to go behind the headlines. Before we do, I want to make a real quick announcement to remind you that this Saturday night, we'll be bringing you a live stream fundraiser for the Southern Oregon Four. That's Lori and Lee Duckworth and their two co-defendants who were raided uh, down there in Jackson County. So uh, we'll be streaming live from Plues Brews on Lombard Street in Potland, Oregon. Got all sorts of great performances we'll be bringing to you and uh, great guests as well. So uh, you can check that out. Uh, email me, Russ at RadicalRust.com if you'd like more information or go to our contact page at 420radio.org. All right, I want to get Oh, and, and by the way, we're going to have a call in. Uh, we'll be speaking to Anna Diaz uh, from Normal Women's Alliance uh, at half past in the next hour. We'll cut in the middle of our dabs panel and give her a call and uh, get a little more information on this as well. So check that out. Stay tuned for that. OK, going behind the headlines. Now, I saw this uh, headline uh, in my cannabis news feed. I actually have a marijuana news feed and a cannabis news feed. Cannabis tends to get you the overseas stories since marijuana is particularly an American term. And I saw this headline from theage.com.au, Australian paper, and it says, Cannabis probably contributed to motocross riders' death. All right, so let's see how this rolls. It begins by saying, A coroner has found the use of cannabis by a motocross rider before he was killed during a race probably contributed to his death. Coroner Dr. Jane Hentlass Hentless, I'd say, uh, said she believed Anthony Roach, age 41, had used cannabis about two hours before the race held uh, at a motocross club. And uh, because of this, she recommends that the club management of these motocross clubs uh, introduce a random and targeted saliva testing program to deter cannabis users from taking part in motocross races. So I thought that's kind of interesting that she had the science to determine that this guy was so impaired by cannabis, it led to his death in motocross. Because if I recall properly, motocross is kind of dangerous, right? There's a, there, there's a kind of an inherent risk in motocross as it is. Do we know that cannabis really caused the problem? Well, looking a little further down in the story, you know, below all the cannabis killed the motocross rider stuff, is a description of what happened on this day. It was February 24th, 2007, about 10 in the morning. And uh, I have to tell you, the guy being called Mr. Roach, <laughs> that's that's a little bit of a uh, little pun there. But uh, anyway, the motocross rider was named Roach. And uh, this is what happened. Uh, 10 a.m. February 24th, Mr. Roach was completing the first lap of the B-grade Martini racing race when he crashed toward the end of the top of the big table jump. He fell off on the down ramp. So, you know, if you know motocross or anything, it's a big old jump and, you know, on the way down, wrecks, tumbles, right? That's not what killed him. As Mr. Roach was getting up, another rider in the race came down the slippery ramp from the jump and was unable to avoid hitting Mr. Roach. Mr. Roach was knocked unconscious and died at 10.50 a.m. So... Let's get this straight. The coroner here is saying that the motocross rider who did the big, huge, dangerous jump and wrecked coming off the jump and then got ran into by someone else, it must have been cannabis that caused that. Because, you know, if he wasn't a cannabis user, then he would have uh, not wrecked in a motocross race? No, that happens. I mean, no matter how, how sober you are. Uh, would have got out of the other guy's way in time? Uh, what's the argument here? Well, Dr. Hentless had more to say about this. Dr. Hentless said that the toxicology test revealed Mr. Roach was probably a frequent cannabis user. Okay, if he's a frequent cannabis user, we know that he's built up tolerances to the impairing effects of cannabis. She continues to say that he had used cannabis two hours before the race after he had arrived and signed on at the club at 7 a.m. So she's saying, because wreck happens about 10, right? So she's saying he signs into the club at 7 in the morning, somewhere around 8 in the morning gets high, and then around 10 in the morning has the wreck. Well, guess what, Dr. Hentless? The toxicology reports, whether you're looking at the amount of active THC in the blood, in blood serum, or inert metabolites in urine, there's no real good way of being able to determine that that guy had been using two hours before. 
no really good way. We know that people that are frequent cannabis users have higher background levels, have higher baseline levels of THC in their system at all times. We also know that THC spikes in the blood and blood plasma very shortly after smoking. Like it'll jump over 100 or so within the first five minutes, but then declines rapidly for, throughout the first four hours of, intoxic or, or, of, of uh, impairment of use on that cannabis. So at what number do you think he came in at, doctor, to determine that it was about two hours ago that he'd used cannabis? For all we know, he had not used any cannabis that day and just had naturally high levels of cannabinoids in his system. Also, the uh, people at the club, no one at the club suspected he had been using cannabis. So no reports that he was blurry-eyed or smelled of skunk or anything like that. Bad journalism, junk science. <laughs>